In this video of our intro to robotic series, we're going to learn how to use the OLED screen in front of the robot. We're going to use it to display custom images that we'll prepare on our computers. We'll use the Arduino IDE to load them onto the robot via USB. All right, let's do this. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. They're currently offering a great deal, just $2 for 10 prototype PCBs with fast turnaround time. They offer a variety of options and the resulting PCBs were great. They also offer stencils, have great facilities and wonderful people. So I encourage you to give them a try. The little screen in front of Willy, it's a typical OLED display that we've used in other projects. It communicates over I2C to the ATmega328 microcontroller inside of Wheelie. To communicate with the screen, we're going to use the fantastic U8G2 library by Oli Kraus that we can find on GitHub. It works for a number of controllers, including the SSD1306 that we need for our display. To install the library, we can simply go through the tools menu, manage libraries, search for UAG2 and install it. Once installed, we're going to include it and we're going to use the constructor that's specific to the screen that we have. In the setup function, we'll only need to do a handful of things to load the image onto the screen. We'll need to call the begin method of the display object so that everything gets initialized. Then we need to call the first page method so that the first page of the display buffer is displayed. Inside of a do while loop, we'll call the functions that we need to actually draw what we want on the screen. In this case, I'm going to use the draw XBMP method so that I can draw a custom image onto the display. The condition for this while loop is as long as the next page exists. As this is pretty much what I need, I'll save the file with the name OLED. Now we need to prepare the image that we want to display on the screen. I'll choose my favorite image, which is the mascot of the company, Little Acrobot. The easiest way to prepare the image is using the open source image editor GIMP. It's free to use and it has a very extensive set of features. Once installed, I'll open the image and using the image menu, I'll select the mode to be indexed. Make sure you select the option use black and white one bit palette. Next, we need to scale and crop the image so that it fits on the 128 by 64 pixel resolution of the screen. As this image is already 128 by 64 pixels, all I need to do is to export it under a particular format. I'll click on export and use the default options that come up. Once the file is exported, I can open it with any text editor. I'll use the built-in text edit, but you can use whatever you want. Notice how this is already a plain text file that we can simply copy paste onto our Arduino IDE as it is formatted as C code. To keep things tidy, instead of including the contents of the image in my main file, I'll open a new tab with the name util.h. I'll paste the contents in this file and make a few changes so that it works with the Arduino environment. I'll include the procmem modifier so that it's stored in flash memory, and I'll make sure to include this new file onto my main file with an include statement, making sure that I've installed the USB drivers as shown in another video. I'll go ahead and connect Willy to the USB port of my computer. I'll flip the switch on and using the tools menu of the Arduino IDE, I'll select the correct board and the correct port. I can then upload the code 
and after a few seconds I can see my custom image being displayed in full glory on the little OLED screen. The reason for the flicker on the video is because of the shutter of the camera. If I see the image in real life, it actually looks more like this photo. So there you have it. We've learned how to prepare custom images for displaying them on our little OLED screen in our Wheelie robot. If you like my videos, I invite you to my Patreon page where you can chip in a buck or two. That really helps me put in more time into the videos and release them quicker. But whatever you do, don't forget to like, subscribe, or leave me a comment. You can also interact with me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and you can even use the community tab of the channel. Thank you for watching my videos, and I will see you next time.